Your partner has been called away. No, I see he's coming now. That was too much to her. Forgive me, Your Excellency, but Mademoiselle has promised me this dance. Oh, well, I must return to my official duties. You're certain, Mademoiselle. Au revoir. Okay, Mon Excellence. Well, did you get it? Yes. What took you so long? Long did the ambassador bore you. Is everything all right? Quite all right for me. I could quite easily have taken it away myself. No, we might have had trouble. It's better to use Carl. He might still have some trouble. I think we'd better go. Would you want to say goodbye to your admirer, the ambassador? Traitor. He'd have sold our country for the information in that book. It's his country, too. His politics, perhaps, are not the same as yours. Perhaps. That doesn't necessarily mean that his sense of duty differs from yours. If you think that, why do you help me? Oh, not because of politics. Oh. I love adventure. Entirely on. What time does the plane leave tomorrow morning? Eight o'clock. We'll collect the diary from Carl at seven. I'll pick you up at six thirty. expecting us. Oh. Your master's expecting us? Uh, yes, at uh, seven, monsieur. Excuse me, monsieur. Tell your master that we're here before you go. No, after you. Carl! Carl! I'm afraid that uh, monsieur is out, but he will be back. If monsieur and madame will wait... We can't wait. We're in a hurry. Sit down. Where did he go to? I do not know, monsieur. When did he go? Monsieur, I do not know. Carl's double-crossed us. So it would appear. Paid this fellow not to talk. Well, I make you talk. No, there isn't time. I give you a choice. A bullet or 200,000 francs. And 15 seconds to make up your mind. I sure wish it was me. Trieste or Gay Perry? I'll take Trieste. Oh, yeah? Yeah, sure. There's more variety. Serbs and Croats and Bulgarians and Austrians and Italians. Yeah, and Turks and Greeks. Uh, hey, uh, are you talking about girls? Why, uh, sure. Wow. Well, looks like I'm going to do a little globe trotting, huh? Uh, Pardonnez-moi, mon ami. Part of two. What? I said part of two. Yeah. Darling, I thought you weren't ever coming. Sorry I overslept. You've been waiting long. About half an hour. I almost didn't come. Why not? Oh, I don't know. Oh, George, even now there's time to change our minds. Oh, no, there isn't.
Bonjour, monsieur. Merci. Bonjour, monsieur. My name is Jolif. Oh, bonjour. Did you want something? Don't we all want something? A man is always striving for the unattainable, isn't he? I think there must be some mistake. This isn't your compartment, is it? Uh, yes and no. That is to say that uh, this part of it is surely mine, and that is yours. You tell me I should have it to myself. Oh, I'm so sorry, monsieur. Monsieur... My name is Poole. Charles Poole. Well, you see, Mr. Poole, nowadays the uh, promises of the railway company officials are no more to be relied on than the promises of women. Like butterflies, so beautiful and yet so elusive. Just born to die. Nevertheless, I will endeavor to efface myself as much as possible. Oh, no, not at all. I didn't mean... I'm very happy to meet you. Monsieur, I share your happiness. <laughs> Monsieur? A café au lait, s'il vous plaît. Oui, monsieur. Good morning. <laughs> it's no sort of drink for train journey, is it? Won't you join me in a scotch? No, thank you. It's rather early in the day for me. <laughs> it's never too early for a scotch. Never too late, either. Uh, you sure you won't change your mind? No, thank you. Merci. You want some coffee, madame? Please, over there. I haven't found him yet. Most of the passengers have locked their doors. Maybe he's not on the train at all. Of course he is. Pierre was obviously telling the truth. But you... You were not telling the truth last night. You should have told me you'd killed a man. Valia, one has killed so many men since 1939. The actual operation has lost much of its novelty to me. You doubt the French police still find it interesting? The French police don't operate beyond the frontiers of France. In Switzerland, there are Swiss police. In Italy, Italian. They don't make a habit of it, Zeta. What about Carl? Carl must be found before we reach Zagreb. He shan't reach Zagreb. He shan't reach Trieste, either. Oh, why not? Beyond Trieste, I'm a wanted man. If I want to stay alive, I have to leave the train before we reach Trieste. In that case, you find Carl first. J'en ai assez de tout enfin, ça. Mais je ne vais pas y aller. 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 Monsieur, I say don't beat love. I've got a letter for you. My name is Denny. Pas travailler comme ça, c'est pas. Oh, this, this is a letter from the, the president of the company, monsieur. Yes, he's a friend of my father's. Oh, monsieur, the president asks me to do all in my power to assist you. But in what way, monsieur? Well, as a matter of fact, old man, my father's a director of one of the railway lines in England. Oh. Now that I'm demobbed, I've decided to take up the eating racket. Racket? Yes, yeah, so the old man thought it would be a good idea if I saw something foreign, you know? Yeah. Saw how you ran your kitchens and all that. So I went to your president, and he said there's nothing better for me to do than to make a trip with you. Oh, Monsieur le Président is right, Monsieur. With Poirier, you shall see the cuisine at its most remarkable. Seven years now, I am senior chef of the company. They will tell you everywhere there is only one Poirier. <laughs> good Joe, good Joe. Ah, I suppose you're hotting up the old jackrabbit for luncheon, eh? No, the déjeuner prepares itself. Here we are doing the plat du jour. Oh, that's cod, isn't it? Yes, yes. Uh, I shall explain you how we make it. Thank you. You butter your dish. Put the fish, season with salt and pepper. Put a little minced echalot, chopped champignon, you know, mushroom, <laughs> minced parsley, cover with white wine, and put it into the oven, and it's cooked. I say, that's very neat, isn't it? But do you really think cod's worth all that trouble? Trouble? Yes, you see, at home, we just lower the jolly old creature into the boiling water, let it boil, Serve it up with greens and chips. <laughs> but you get no, no sauce. Oh, Lord, yes, there's always a bottle of sauce around somewhere. Hmm. What's this, pudding? On y va, c'est ça. It's <laughs> coming fast. Paris, c'est ça, moi, je parle là. Maybe a week, maybe a year. I never know where Uncle Sam's gonna need me next. It all sounds most terribly disturbing. Myself, I know exactly how long I'll be there. Three weeks, then back to Liverpool. Uh, you're going out there to uh, sell them something, I suppose, huh? Well, in a sort of way. What, ladies' lingerie? Oh, my dear fellow, no. You see, I'm lecturing in sort of welfare work. Oh, 
What on? Oh, British birds. Birds, huh? Uh, you suppose you got a lot of birds in Liverpool, eh? No, only sparrows, I'm afraid. Well, uh, what makes you think they're so hot on sparrows in Trieste? Oh, no, no. I'm afraid you misunderstand what I say. You see, I lecture on all kinds of birds, from books. Oh, uh, like that one, I suppose. Yes, rather. Uh, would you like to have a look at it? Uh, yeah, sure. What is that? A snipe. Yeah, kind of looks it, too. Uh, do you have a lecture starring one of these things? Oh, yes. It's just about my favorite bird. I, uh, I suppose the snipe has something the sparrow hasn't. Oh, it has. It drums. It what? It drums. It makes a noise exactly like a drum at nesting time. Oh, does it? Well, uh, never having heard a drum at nesting time, there you have me. You don't get many birds in France. Who don't? They're not protected here. Oh, that's too bad. Do you think we shall get a chance to see some of the magnificent scenery on route? Do we? Scenery? No, oh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, oh, sure. I'm so glad. You know, when I looked up the route on the map, I said to myself, I do hope I get a chance to see some of the real beauties of Switzerland. Oh, not a chance of that, Pops. We don't stop over long enough. Come in. Well, 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 come on in. Brother, whether we stop over at Switzerland or not, it looks as if your prayers are answered. Uh, meet Mr. Elvin. He's fresh out of Liverpool. Hot stuff on birds. Monsieur, go to Trieste. Yeah, honey, that's the schedule, uh, so far. Oh, I am so glad. My sister and myself, we are so much alone upon this train. Oh, that's too bad. So we look for a gentleman to be kind to us. Well, honey, you've looked. Hey, voila. You will help us? Just say the word. Oh. And Monsieur here? Maybe I'll have to handle both of you myself. Oh, you are very sweet. Oh, it's nothing really, I... It is a drawing. Hmm? The customs, you understand? Oh, yes, we, we, we. So you keep this art for me, because if I declare them myself, it is too much to pay. But if monsieur... We... Oh, sure, don't worry. Oh, merci, mes frères. Et for my little sister, monsieur here, will do the same. It is my little sister's suggestion. She is always so suggestive. Is she? Mm-hmm. Merci mille fois. Monsieur, go to Trieste. Well, Mr. Elvin, what do you know about that? I can't help thinking of a most striking parallel amongst our British birds. The cuckoo always leads its egg in someone else's nest. You mean there are kinds of birds that'll fall for that? Time and again. A kind of pipit, usually. Well, Mr. Elvin, from here on in, just uh, call me Pippet. You're for Trieste? Zagreb. Oh, Zagreb. That's uh, not this city to travel to Zagreb. <laughs> you must have very important business to undertake such a long journey. Entrez. Ah, monsieur, le docteur Legault and le professeur Chaumier send their compliments. Le docteur Legault, professeur Chaumier on board. Oui, monsieur, in coach five. Merci. Two very good friends of mine are on the train. You will excuse me, you do understand. Of course. Au revoir. Why the devil has this man been put in here? I must promise this compartment to myself. Oh, I am sorry, monsieur, but it is not always possible. Last minute arrivals, you understand. And, of course, for such a person as Monsieur Joliffe. And what's so special about Monsieur Joliffe? Monsieur does not know who he is? No, who is he? Oh, c'est formidable. Joliffe, Monsieur, is of the police. A detective inspector. A hero of the resistance. And since, bien, 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 bien connu. Oh, la, 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 la. Police? Oui, Monsieur. So, you see, it is essential that he should be found above. Yes, of course. But I do want a compartment to myself. It will not be easy, Monsieur. Perhaps if uh, Monsieur really insists. Thank you, Monsieur. I will see what I can do. To distribute to let you. We do, c'est toi. And now, nothing to declare. <laughs> to future happiness. To future happiness. George, do you... Do I what? Oh, I don't know. 
Of course I do, darling. Oh, yes, I know. I, I didn't mean that, though. And what precisely do you mean? George, do you think I'm cheap? Don't be silly. It isn't silly. If anyone found out, what would they think? Nobody will find out. And even if they did, it doesn't worry me what other people think. That means you think they would think I was cheap. Now, look, Joe. Life can be sordid or it can be beautiful. It all depends upon the point of view of the person who's living it. We know how we feel about it, and that's all that matters. Oh, George, yes. You do know that I love you, don't you? You do know that I'm not just looking for excitement or... Of course I do, darling. And you do believe that I'd never have dreamed of coming away if it was only... Of course I do. You feel the same, George, don't you? You're not just regarding this as a... as a casual affair to enliven a business trip. Oh, George, if I thought that... Uh, Joan. Oh, any luck? Ah, oh, monsieur, it has all been arranged. Good, let's go. No, don't I'll take that. Monsieur, c'est par là, à droite. Merci. Pardon. Oui, monsieur, it is all yours. Monsieur is satisfied? Perfectly, thank you. Thank you, monsieur. First déjeuner, monsieur. Lunch. That's a good idea. First service, monsieur. Give me time to wash my face and hands. One bottle for now, monsieur. That should suffice. Bon. And just so that I know what my sink is, you might have another scotch waiting for me, monsieur. Uh, an oat tasse de cosse. Oui, monsieur. Yes. Will monsieur and madame take the first déjeuner? Oh, I should think so. Hmm? Oh, wait a minute. What time are we due at Dijon? In half an hour, madame. Then we'll take the second déjeuner. Madame, I'm hungry, you know. Carl may try and leave the train. We must watch for him. And if he does? We'll follow him. But don't you worry, we will find him anywhere. No way, anywhere short of Trieste. Lunatic, monsieur. This is the chef du train. It is not so. There is but one chef, c'est moi. It is I who distribute my passengers. He doesn't understand this man. His parents, both of them, were even oh, oh, imbeciles. Oh, well, what's happened? Monsieur, this compartment, it is reserved. Reserved? But it can't be reserved. There's no one else here. It is reserved from Dijon. They are an English gentleman who joined the train. But that's ridiculous. I can't keep on changing. I regret, but it has been reserved. This imbecile, monsieur, will be reported on. Listen. You say this other chap's coming on at Dijon. Mm -hmm. oh, give him the berth that I had at first. Tell him there's been a double booking. I'll make it worth your while. Uh, impossible, monsieur. The gentleman who joins the train at Dijon is Monsieur McBain, a most important man. A writer, too. Such people prefer to be alone. A celebrated man, and therefore very rich. Les bagages de monsieur. Et votre tunique. Monsieur, s'il vous plaît. But I can't go back there. I can't. I much regret, monsieur. That fellow, surely for whatever his name is, he's always playing jazz. Jazz? Ah, oh, monsieur, I can't sympathize. It is my wife who listens to the Bing Crosby all night long. Well, perhaps at Lausanne or Montreux, possibly a reservation will become vacant. Who can say? But I want to stay there. That, monsieur, is impossible. Unless, of course, you want to have it from Trieste. What's that? Monsieur McBain leaves me at Trieste. But then after that... You mean... I can have it from Trieste to Zagreb. Certainly, monsieur. Oh, good. Oh, that's fine. 
Still, I shall want another berth until then. Please try to find one. You may be assured that I will do my best. If Monsieur will have lunch, perhaps at Dijon, who can say? Yes, all right, I'll go along. And do what you can, will you? Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Yes, sir. Vous entrez là, je viens vous parler. Dépêchez-vous. Allons, allons, allons. Is this seat free? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, yes, uh, rather, yeah. Thank you. Excuse me. You hungry, sweetheart? Mmm, starving. Good. Uh, which is my scotch? George Grant. By all that's wonderful. How are you, Tom? Very well, old boy. I can't complain. What an extraordinary coincidence seeing you. I'll join you if I may. It's Tom Bishop. Well, well, well. It's good to see a friendly face. You on holiday? Uh, no, business. I say, you legal John is certainly get around a bit, don't you? What are you doing? Soliciting in Venice? Oh, no, in Trieste. I know. You're hunting up some sort of juicy evidence for one of your rich clients, aren't you? You're a dirty rascal. Uh. I say, George. Uh, could I move in with you? You're probably in with one of these ghastly foreign fellows, aren't you? What's he like? My name is Poole. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I, I, no, I, I, I'm just guessing. I don't, I don't know. George should have introduced you, shouldn't he? Yes, of course he should. Oh, yes. Uh, Poole, um, uh, this is Tom Bishop, an old school friend of mine. How do you do? And since. Now, don't be tactful, George. Life's far too short. No, the fact is he handled my divorce me last year. Did it jolly well, too. When it comes to divorce lawyers, he's the tops. Uh, you in the same racket? Uh, yes, we're working on this case together. Are you? I shouldn't care to be footing the bill. Let him pay who can, I say. <laughs> some drink. Uh, Stuart, Dersey Cossé Grand. What do you think of my fish, yeah? Very practical. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's hoping you catch him at it. Mr. McBain. Who? McBain, the writer, you know. He another bird man? Oh, no, no. He writes on politics. He's on a lecture tour, I know. He's just founded a new world council. Kind of original, hmm? It's called the Crusade of the Common Man. Seems to me the little guy's doing all the crusading. Eh bien, Monsieur McBean, je vous remercie encore une fois des quelques paroles que vous avez bien voulu prononcer hier soir. Yes, quite. Well, Mills, what are you waiting for? Well, McBain, I hope you have a pleasant trip. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Au revoir, Monsieur McBean. Bon voyage. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. J'espère que vous aurez un bon voyage. Merci. Permettez? Oui. Et bien, voyons. Oh, chef, voici monsieur McBain. Enchanté, monsieur McBain. Oh, no, uh, this is uh, monsieur McBain. Idiot. Excusez-moi, monsieur. Et les bagages, voyons. Et votre tunique. Qu'il m'emmerde, celui-là, avec ses boutons, boutons, boutons. You gave that taxi driver far too much. Five francs is ample for a foreigner. Yes, sir. Oh, for heaven's sake, Mills, haven't you learned how to do that yet? I'm sorry, sir. You have a berth for my secretary, I suppose? Yes, indeed, monsieur. Shall I...? No, no, no. He'll find it later. I want him here just now. Mm -hmm. uh, will monsieur be requiring lunch? The second service starts immediately we leave Dijon. Yes, we shall want lunch. Thank you. Thank you, monsieur. Will monsieur be requiring anything more? No, thank you. No, monsieur? That's what I said. Mills, shut the door. I feel the draft. Merci mille fois, monsieur. Ah, celebrity. <laughs> oh, la la. Scotsman. You know what time it is, Mills? No, oh, it's closer.
Colonel Mills, stop chattering and call me in ten minutes. Yes, sir. What about a game of cards tonight, eh? There's you, there's George, there's me, there's... Uh, well, I'll get a fourth from somewhere. You just leave it to Tom. There's nothing like an all-night poker session on the train, eh? I only hope the scotch holds out. I'm awfully tired, Tom. Are you? Honestly, sir, boy. You have a sleep this afternoon, get yourself in trim for tonight. Let's face it, oh boy. There's nothing else to do, is there? <whistles> ah, we're off. Well, I'm glad we've met. So am I, George. I hate travelling alone. I hope we'll meet again. Dinner. Yes, rather, but uh, don't let's break it up yet. Let's go on to your carriage and have a chat. Tom, Just come uh, on, George. What do you say, fool, eh? All right. The champion with me hates cigars. Quite frankly, he seems to be smoking his socks. Next coach, is it? Yes, number seven. I say, George, she's an extraordinarily pretty girl sitting next to us there, isn't she? Yeah, she is nice, isn't she? You know, I think it ought to be a criminal offence to leave a girl like that alone. Excuse me a moment. What's the matter? I left a cigarette case at the table. You carry on. That's OK. Take a seat. Thanks. One of these? Thank you. You English? Well, I was brought up in England. Oh, yes. I'm British, you know. Really? Oh, yes. It's all your fault. You shouldn't know an awful man like that. Darling, I didn't choose the boys who went to school with me. Well, you could have dropped him afterwards. I did until his case last year. I, I, I think you'd better get off at Lucerne. George, you can't leave me stranded like that. Now, look, Joan, Bishop's dynamite. He's a stockbroker, he drinks and talks, and once he finds out, my reputation's gone. Well, I'm risking mine. Can't you risk yours? I'm risking mine because I loved you. If you loved me back, you'd do the same. Darling, please don't shout. I wasn't shouting, darling. Darling, the stewards are looking Let at us. Oh, why shouldn't we look? said you'd play poker with him, too. All right, all right, I'll think of something else. But please, darling, do control yourself. Pardon, monsieur, madame. Le second service, I'm afraid I'll have to... Uh, yes, 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 we must go, yes. Where to? Where I'll find you another compartment for an hour. I must get back, don't miss me. Now, I'll fix it all up. Now, don't worry, everything will be all right. Here's one from the ambassador we saw in Paris last week, sir. Oh, excellent. What does he say? Mon cher Mac Bean. Today, my government has given its decision on the question raised in conversation when we met last week. I am ordered by my foreign office to inform you that they cannot grant permission for a lecture tour within my country's frontiers. I wish to emphasize, however, that there is no shadow of objection raised against your visiting my country as a private citizen or a common man. That's enough, Mills. Tinpot little government like that. Common man, indeed. Never hurts its cheek. Here, Mills, take a letter. Yes, sir. My dear ambassador. Oh, cut out the my. And cut out the dear ambassador. Just, sir. Your letter of the so-and-so received. As one who has lectured with official recognition and encouragement in Washington, Paris. Oh, you know them all, put in the lot. Yes. It comes as a great surprise to be debarred from... Oh, damn it, Mills, I can't believe it. Me, to be banned from crusading in a cockeyed state like that? It comes as a great surprise that... Oh, I've lost the thread. Where was I, Mills? In a cockeyed state, sir. No, no, you fool. Don't put that down. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, yes, well, we'll do it later. Ah, oh, from the dear Dean. Take this. Uh, my dear Dean, I was extremely gratified to learn that you enjoyed my article last week. Of the many and enthusiastic letters which I have had congratulating me, Yours, my dear Dean, stands quite alone. Quite alone? Yes. What do you know the time? Gone half past four. Is that all? Is that all? Better get yourself 40 weeks sleep. You're going to hold your own tonight. And don't you boys worry. I'll get a fourth from somewhere, even if it has to be the ruddy engine driver. I want to thank you for helping me out a bit at lunch. Don't mention it. Thanks. Pretty tricky. 
It's that boring guest. It made it awkward for you professionally. Exactly. I'm extremely grateful to you. We aim to please. Well, I think I'll have a little sleep. See you tonight. Yes, rather. That's a good idea. I think I'll have a little nap, too. Well, you've got your own compartment, haven't you? Yes. This is it. Look here, I, I only said... I know. You... I heard exactly what you said. Surely you wouldn't like to disillusion him. I mean to say, you wouldn't want him to find out who owns this dainty little pair of gloves. Look here, what's your game? <laughs> a very simple one. In my compartment, there's a man who plays the radio incessantly. I've asked the chef to try and to move me somewhere else, but he hasn't found me another berth so far, and I'm rather afraid he won't. So here I stay until we pass Trieste. He's got a free compartment after that. You mean you're going to stay in here all night? That's the general idea, yes. Then of course, you feel you'd like to find another berth. I'm rather tired of snooping around these drafty corridors myself. It's, uh, it's really up to you. I'll soon fix that. Now, don't worry, I'll find him. You go and rest, huh? All right. Oh, hello. From your expression, you are disappointed. Oh, no, of course not. I've seen too many disappointed faces not to know. My own included. You know, Monsieur Farrier, I've always held that cooking is a knack. Knack? Exactly. Either you've got it or you haven't. I'm one of the lucky ones. I always used to do the cooking at our scout troop. I remember when I was in the army, my CO yanked me out of being an educations officer and sent me on a messing course at Aldershot. Ever been there? No, monsieur. Oh, it's a dashed fine place. It's a sort of paradise for army cooks. I passed out 27. I remember I had to conjure up a Lancashire hot pot. It's quite easy when you know the drill. I'll tell you how it's done. You get a piece of mutton, neck, saddle's no good, and you tear it into chops. A layer of meat, one layer onions and potatoes. Slivers of potatoes if you want to do it proud. Again, a layer of meat, a layer of spuds, and so on and so forth. You understand what I mean, or am I going too quick for you? No, oh, I follow you perfectly, sir. <laughs> Good show. How far have we got? Layer number five. You might come across him. He's slight, little moustache. I particularly wanted to see him, so if you do come across him, would you? Right ho. Oh, about leaving here for group. You know, one can't be too careful. Our English trains are bad enough, but these continental ones, why, every second person you meet's probably a thief. Oh, very true, very true. Now, what I say is you mustn't take risks. Now, come dinner time, if you'll go to first service, I'll take t'other. In that way, there'll be somebody here all the time to guard our luggage. You're remarkably good idea, then. <laughs> you can't teach me much about travelling. I've travelled Leeds to Bradford for, eh, nigh on 27 years. Did you, really? I'm in the motor trade, you know. Really? Yeah. Eh, uh, what, you're off again? Ah, uh, just for a moment. I am, my dear Lord Edward, yours, etc., etc., etc. Shall I type these letters out now, sir? No, 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 you can do that when I'm at tea. Now, uh, read the paper to me, Mills. What did Dijon say about my speech? Yes, sir, la vie de Dijon, I will honor the rest of our Monsieur Alistair McBain, célèbre écrivain anglais et le fondateur... Stop it, Mills. Where did you go to school? In England, sir. Then stick to English. Last night, Dijon had the honor of entertaining Mr. Alistair McBain, the famous English author, and the founder of the crusade of the common man. Well, go on, Mills. That's all, sir. Well, why the devil don't you say so? Uh, I see a Paris embassy has been robbed, sir. Oh, which one? Your friend who wrote to you this morning. Really? Do him a bit of good. What did they take? It doesn't say. A member of the staff has been murdered, too. Uh, not the ambassador. <laughs> that fellow never did the right thing yet. Mills, one day I'll make that jumped-up jack in office eat his words. Yes, sir. Mills? Do you know what time it is? I'm five minutes out, sir. Look, that fellow pool can't move through one. What do you mean, can't move? Well, he just won't budge. He says he's staying in our cabin until someone finds him somewhere else to go. I found him another one, but not till one o'clock. Till one? I know. I'm sorry, darling. Still, it's safer. Tom will be tucked up in bed by then. Oh, George, everything's gone wrong. Perhaps it's retribution or something. Oh, nonsense. Just bad staff work. Everything will be all right. Still, if you'd rather get off at Lausanne. George, do you want me to? Of course not. 
So it might be better if you stayed in there for the night. It'd be safer. The, the berth is free, isn't it? Darling, do you want me to? You do ask such silly questions. Silly child. Bien to. Till half past one. Till a quarter past. All right, till a quarter past. Just about crossing the Swiss Italian border now. That last place was called Brake. That's right. Sounds Scotch, doesn't it? Yes, doesn't it? I wonder why. I don't know. Weren't you Scotch when we got stranded there and couldn't pay the duty on their kilts, I guess? The next stop's Domodossola. What a funny word. Makes you think of camels, doesn't it? Uh, no, not me. Oh, but surely, my dear boy, you know, a kind of dromedary. No, sir. Never met one socially. They're just like camels, really. Only with two humps. Uh, you gonna give them a lecture on that, too, in Trieste? Oh, no, no, I'm purely birds. I only study animals. Well, it's a kind of busman's holiday, you know. Ah, I see. I find them fascinating, I admit. But you know, it doesn't do to have two subjects. It's concentration which achieves results. That's why I stick to birds. But still, I must admit that the duckbill platypus is fascinating. Do you realize that it's the only animal which lays an egg? Really? Well, uh, maybe the others just haven't tried yet, hmm? Signore. Tiens, bonjour, mon vieux. Ah, oh, Monsieur Joly. You have nothing to declare, of course. Yeah, not yet. Perhaps on the way back, who knows? <laughs> Merci. For your own use, Signor? That's right. For a rainy day. That's all right. Avete niente di declarare? Je ne parle pas italien et ma soeur non plus. You speak English? Yes, a little. Good. Um, then you have nothing to declare? No, monsieur. Does mademoiselle know the English word, um, the hut? Yes. Why? Still, mademoiselle has nothing to declare. No, monsieur. Well, well, it is incredible. It seems this year in Paris that the man is wearing the woman's hats. Okay. Aha. And it is empty. Yes. I'm keeping it for silk stockings when I come back. Aha. Let us hope that you will come back. Good night. Good night. Oh, forgive me. I was looking for a friend of mine. Ah, oh, but there was a gentleman here who's just gone. I don't know where. Perhaps he was your friend. I rather think he didn't like my friend. Do you like music? Oh, oh I see you do. <laughs> do you go to Venice for the festival? Perhaps, if my business is finished in time. Your business? You don't look the type of a career woman. May one wonder what sort of business you're in? One may. But Monsieur may be certain that whatever it is, it is no business of his. Oh, <laughs> forgive me. I'm sorry, I disturbed you. Not at all. By the way, remember me. It's probable we shall meet again. Tom, any more for the Johnny Old Skylark? I don't feel awfully like a game tonight. Swing in the lid, eh? I'll put you on defaulters. Come on, nice game of cards, it's just the job. Uh, Tom, I'm tired. Tired? Nonsense, dear old fella. All you want is something to do. 
I bet you'd wake up with that little number we saw at lunch dropped in here to do a homework, eh? All right, all right. Have you got a four? No, not yet. Don't you worry. I'll just bring out the cards and then you'll see the rush. I tell you, they'll swarm round us. Well, I'll go book a table. Meanwhile, you fellas get yourselves organised. And George. Cheer up. I'm not going. Might as well. We, we can't turn into one. Why not? Well, um, changing over and, uh, and all that. Oh, yes, I see. Oh, thank you very much. Any sign? No, not yet. I've still got a few compartments left. He's certainly keeping undercover. Mm. If he's on the train at all. I thought he was so confident that Pierre spoke the truth. Yes, I was. But then why so sad? Carl gets beyond Trieste with that diary. It means revolution. Putting the clock back to where it was before my father died. Don't worry, Velia. I'll find him. I'll go into every single compartment tonight. I'll even come and have a look at yours. For Carl? Yes, of course, for Carl. In my compartment, there's a little girl who is very much in love. Pity they aren't, too. Tell me, William. Where did you lose your heart, huh? What makes you think I have lost my heart? Well, where is it, then? I lost it the day my father was murdered. I promised myself then that I'd carry on with his work. And if I get that book, it will be completed. And then? And then, maybe I'll take a holiday. Alone? Perhaps alone. Perhaps not. And if perhaps, perhaps. Huh? Mm -hmm. Perhaps. <laughs> Stuart, uh, cigarettes, please. At once, monsieur. Thank you. I say, no, that girl, I wonder who... One. Sorry, I forgot she's uh, your... Uh, your uh, hmm. Stuart, uh, trois uh, scotch, please, and uh, uh, packet of cards, you know, uh, cheche la femme. Pour le poker game. Was that for moi? Very well, monsieur. You're going to think the fellow didn't understand me, wouldn't you? Hmm. Uh, you wouldn't care to join us, would you? No, thank you very much. I have lots of work to do. Really? Hmm. All work and no play, you know. Drives all the girls away. Look here, I'd really rather turn in now, get a few hours rest. Come on, you might win a lot of money. The bishop's a terrible player. You sure you won't play? Just for half an hour? Quite sure. Lots of good. Thank you all the same. Look here, I'd rather turn in ah, now, get a few George hours rest. Ah, George, who? I think I'll change my mind. You will play? Good man. Now, let me introduce you. This is George Grant. Uh, I'm you? Bishop and Mr. Poole. How do you do? My name is Zerta. I'm delighted to meet you all. Been searching for a friend all day. I, I left my cigarettes behind. Please do smoke mine. I just bought some, Mr. Poole. I got plenty of one. Sit down. I say, you seen a ghost? I'm sorry, I didn't want to make a fuss. I'm liable to these attacks. It's just giddiness, you know. I think I'll go and lie down in my bunk. Fine, I'll come along and see that you're all right. No, don't bother. You begin without me. No, it wouldn't be the same, would it? You stay here, old boy. The air's much better than in those sardine tins. Yes. Perhaps it would be better here. Good man. You, you get outside a large scotch. That'll lay the ghost, old boy. Let's do it. A large scotch for Mr. Poole. Medicinal. Let's cut the deal, shall we? Aye. Yep. Your deal, George. Deal me the aces. Don't more than four. Woman again. Well, well, well. Mr. 
promise you not made a mistake. I, uh, I don't know, honey. Yet. We don't understand, monsieur. Why, uh, I got a little liquor here, and I, I thought maybe you'd like to share it with me. I, I thought you might be lonely without all those hats, you know? So I, I came along. Monsieur is very kind. Oh, well, they breed us kind where I come from. Yes, but my sister and me, we are not thirsty. Oh, heck, you don't have to be thirsty to drink this stuff. Yes, but we are too tired. Oh, this will wake you up. Have you got a couple yes, of glasses? Yes, but we desire to sleep and not to wake up. Who? But why don't you invite your friend to share your bottle with you? Who? Birdman? Mm -hmm. Listen, sister, if I gave that guy one sniff of this stuff, just one, I'd get the lowdown on the lesser spotted, double breasted, jet propelled dromedary bird. I'd rather drink the whole thing myself than listen to a lot of private things that isn't nice to talk about behind a creature's back. Just guess it, sir. Oh, don't get my motives wrong, mademoiselle. This is just a gesture of Franco American solidarity and friendship. That I know, monsieur. For I have seen many such gestures when Americans come to Paris. But really, monsieur. I don't want to be liberated anymore. Good night, sir. Mills, that's all right. Now get off to bed. Yes, sir. Good night, sir. And Mills? Yes, sir. Don't disturb me till half past eight. No, sir. And Mills? Yes, sir. Uh, they liked my speech at Dijon, didn't they? Oh, tremendously, sir. Yes, I thought they did. Good night. Good night, sir. Since it's a run of luck. Yes, good luck can't last forever. Indeed not. I say, uh, Cole, you heard the expression? Lucky with the pasteboards. You're having any trouble with your private life, huh? I bet you are. Well, let's have a drink before we have to pay by barter. Allow me. Pardon, monsieur. Do any of monsieur a light at Sovrano? Sovrano? Never heard of it. We stopped there one minute, monsieur. Oh, that's very kind of a boy. Don't stop for me. Stuart, same again, please. I think I'll just slip down the corridor. Uh -uh. Not while the train is still standing at the station. Yes, but I can't imagine why anyone would want to get out here. No doubt they have their reasons. Shady ones, I won't have it. Very possible. There's another handy one that we use quite a lot. I don't know if you know about it. You mix flour and chop suet with a little water until you get a nice congealed dough. Then you put it in a basin, cover it with a cloth, and boil it for a couple of hours. Simple, isn't it? And you can serve it in a dozen different ways, with syrup, with marmalade, with treacle, with... Oh, well, in a dozen different ways. 
Sometimes we put a teaspoonful of raspberry jam with it. That's called roly-poly pudding. But of course, it's called pudding framboise on the menu. Now, rice can give you some very, very good sweets. Boiled rice, for instance. Of course, we can't get the rice now because the Chinese are holding it all back for themselves. But barley is a very good substitute. Very tasty if served up cold. Please, monsieur, I'm an old man and very tired, so maybe tomorrow. Of course, Monsieur Poirier had thought of something. I'm terribly sorry I kept you up too late. Well, you get a good night's sleep. And tomorrow morning, I'll see if I can make this nice continental breakfast of yours. Bonsoir, Monsieur Poirier. I'm fatigued. I'll finish my frère. Amateur. All right, I'll see you. Well, well, well. I shall have to pop my cigarette case at Trieste. Well, surely we haven't finished. Let's have another round of jackpots. No, it's nearly half past twelve. Aren't you satisfied with all the money we've won? Yes, but I don't mind about the money, though. Look, I'll tell you what. I'll give you back all your losses and, and we can start again. What? I say, old boy, that just isn't done. Gentlemen, Mr. Poole is one of those eccentrics who walks through life uninfluenced by money. No, but... That what? Well, it's a lot of money, isn't it? Indeed it is. But it's money you won fairly, is it not? Well, if that old adage is right, there ought to be a pretty hot romance waiting for me around the corridor. And you, old boy. What about it, eh? Bed? Right. Good night. Good night, Tom. Good night, George. Good night, Mr. Poole. Uh, don't forget your money. Save you the trouble of a will, won't it? Don't forget the steward. Right. Merci mille fois, monsieur, merci. Good night, Mr. Poole. Good night, Mr. Zeta. Good night, Mr. Brown. I'm glad we've met. Who's locking that door for? You'll be moving in a few minutes. I can't go. What do you mean you can't go? I've got another berth for you at one. Yes, I know. Look, Grant, I can't explain. Well, you better have a damn good try. But I must stay here. I can't give you anything you like if you let me stay here. Look, you can have all this, well, anything. Let's get this straight. I don't want money. I want privacy. Now, come on, get out. satisfied with all the money you've won, hmm? Is he dead? I see. You have arranged for him to be conveniently unconscious. I'm most grateful to you for your tact and understanding, Mr. Poole. You little friend. I've come to get the diary. Did you hear me? I've come to get the diary, Mr. Poole. Well, it isn't here. It isn't true. It is true. I swear it's true. Look, Zota, I wouldn't double cross you. I was going to get more for it, that's all. Yes, from another government. I promise you I'd have sent you your share. Carl, I give you ten seconds to produce that diary. Ten seconds don't take long to tick away. But I tell you, it isn't here. Where's... It's in another compartment. I've hidden it. Where? In the compartment where I was at first. I was turned out at Dijon. There was another booking or something. Who's in there now? Look, put that gun away. Now we can talk sensibly. I'm the only one who knows what it is. So I'm the only one who can get it back. If you shoot me now, Zerta, you'll never find it, will you? Unless, of course, you propose to take the train to pieces bit by bit. We'll make a bargain, shall we? I'll be back in that compartment as soon as the man who's in it now gets out. And where does he get out? Trieste. Trieste? You lying, double-crossing little... Don't you know I've got to leave the train before we reach Trieste? Of course you do. You've cooked this up to fool me, haven't you? Well, the diary is here. Well, you give it to me. Zeta, I... All right, I get it myself. Now, will you give it to me? All right. Oh, no, you won't. What? 
Oh, darling. George, what's happened? George! I can't remember. We, we were fighting and he hit me on the head with a bottle. You've killed him, George. No, no. George, no. you have. Look there. Heavens. Joan, what time is it? Joan, what time is it? Uh, just half past one. Then I've been unconscious for about half an hour. Someone must have come in and killed him. George, but, but who? I, I don't know, a train thief or someone. Oh, George, what are we to do? You must go straight back to your compartment. What about you? Oh, I'll think of something when my head clears. Now, the main thing is you mustn't get involved. Wait a minute. All clear. Madame Miscott. Madame Alogi. Thank you. Monsieur. Thank you. George, my rat got caught. Uh, yes. I come for Monsieur Poole, Monsieur. Uh, for Monsieur Poole? Uh, what? Uh... Uh, yes, Monsieur. I was sent to transport Monsieur Poole. He has his new compartment now. He is ready? Uh, no, not quite. Uh, but Monsieur le chef du train said? Yes, I, I, I know, but he's changed his mind and he's asleep. Oh, but Monsieur, surely it's yourself who asked him. Yes, I, I know, but now the man's asleep. But does not Monsieur wish to be alone? Uh, naturally, but uh, but you you know. Uh... Oh, I know, Monsieur. I know. Monsieur is too kind-hearted. Monsieur leave it all to me. I will wake Monsieur Paul. No, no, no. Look here, I'll wake him gradually, and you come back in ten minutes. If Monsieur desire, uh, I'll transport the baggage of Monsieur Paul, and I return in ten uh, minutes. No. Go, go. Oh, mais pardon, Monsieur. Monsieur Poulet est mort. I'll go fetch Monsieur le chef du train. Monsieur and Madame will await him here. I'll wait, of course. But Madame can return to her compartment. Monsieur, Madame will wait here. With you. Oh, George, why did we ever come away? Now, Joan, darling, please, there's no use breaking down. I can't help it. Papers, George, just think of them. I'll never be able to face my friends again. Uh, Joan, pull yourself together. I was mad to come. I should have known. Oh, don't be ridiculous. How could you have known? I never should have trusted you. What do you mean? Joan. Joan. You don't think I... Can... Who else? Who else? Monsieur. Monsieur. Un homme vient d'être assassiné. Pas de blague. Ah, je vous assure, au numéro 18. Allez me chercher le docteur Legros, numéro 26. J'y cours, monsieur. Trouvez-moi un petit coin pour travailler. Entendu, monsieur. I found him. Good. Well, that's all we can tell you, I'm afraid. As for the money, well, it's fairly obvious that no self-respecting murderer would miss an opportunity like that. He planted it on me, of course. While I was unconscious. You can reproduce the actions of a murderer. No, but hang it all, it's obvious. Perhaps it is, and again, perhaps it is not. You have a stewardess on the train? Of course, monsieur. She will conduct Madame, uh, Madame or Mademoiselle? Miss Maxted. She will conduct Miss Maxted to her compartment to get dressed and to come back. Very good, monsieur. You, you will remain here on the guard. You will contact the police of Venice and arrange for them to meet the train. Certainly, monsieur. You can rest assured that I will do my utmost to apprehend Mr. Poole's murderer. Good morning, Mr. Alvin. I guess we made some progress in the night, huh? Good morning. Yes, as far as I can judge, we must be somewhere between Padua and Venice. About midway, I'd say. You didn't dream about no birds last night, did you? No, why? I did. Thousands of them, picking on me, millions of them, diving at me, pecking at me, flying around my head in ever-decreasing circles. Oh. <laughs> Perhaps you had a nightmare. You're telling me. Maybe you caught a cold or got a temperature. I got a temperature, all right, pal, but I ain't got no cold. Say, what was the name of that character that drums again? The snipe. Yeah, it's them I dreamed about. I couldn't seem to move without I stepped on a snipe. Clouds of them all beating drums and talking French and laying hat boxes in other people's hats. Oh. 
I brought some aspirins in my pocket if you'd like some. Oh, thanks, pal. I got some medicine right here. I guess I'll take a dose of that. Maybe I can frighten off them Snape that way. Oh, no, 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 my dear fellow. You see, the plural of Snipe is Snipe. I don't like it. When that girl came back at 3.30 this morning, she was crying bitterly. I'm sorry to hear that. But, Zerta, she's so young. Well, obviously. I don't want this girl... It doesn't matter about the man, but I don't want this girl involved. My dear Valia, that girl and Mr. Grant walked slap into it. So far as we are concerned, like a gift from heaven. One doesn't look a gift horse in the mouth, does one? Or if one does, one pays for it. I should have to pay with my name. And you probably too. I had no part in this. Mm. It'd be very difficult to prove. And listen, Valia. If the worst should happen, and I'm accused of having killed Mr. Poole, remember that I went into your compartment after I finished playing cards. and remained there until... What time did you say that girl came back? 3.30. Remained there until 3.30. Do you understand? You really think I'd tell them that? Well, why not? It's at least a possibility, isn't it? Yeah, voila, the case is yours. Mais non, 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 monsieur. You have been present when the crime has taken place. Already you have your own theories. And besides, it is an honor to assist the Signor Jolie in his task. Monsieur, the case is yours. Oh, thank you. Well, Excuse me, please. You wish to see me, monsieur? But you're the local Sherlock Holmes. What a flatterer you are. I am Inspector Jolie of the Sûreté. Well, if you'll forgive me for saying so, you look a very reasonable sort of fellow. Thank you. And? Uh, look, it's rumored around the train that you'd rather put your foot in it. Have I, really? Yes, uh, the whole thing is preposterous. It's laughable. Uh, maybe it is, but I'm afraid poor Mr. Poole will never laugh anymore. Yes, I know, poor chap. I'm sorry about that. But, uh, well, they tell me that you've pinched old George. Why, it's fantastic to arrest a fellow like George for... Why but... so? Why so? Well, I know him. You don't. I tell you, it's so kill a business associate is... Well, uh... What, you, you mean to say that uh, Mr. Poole was an associate of Mr. Crown? Why, yes, of course. They're on the same case together. They're traveling to Venice, you know, collecting evidence. Uh, 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 well, that's another thing, too. Have I made another faux pas? Uh, what? I mean, uh, Ella. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, uh, in ignorance, I've no doubt. But uh, this is the silliest thing of all. They tell me that you suspect that George is traveling on this train with a young girl. Are you aware that he's a married man? Oh, you surprise me, monsieur. And to a very pretty girl once more? Mm. Mm. Have you ever observed in life that men who marry pretty women are inclined to be susceptible to... Pretty wooden. Well, I... <laughs> Mr. Bishop, have you got anything else to tell me? No, no, no. I just came along here to clear old George. Now that I've done it, I'll just nip off and finish my breakfast. Please do. I shall bear your theory in mind. Uh, what theory, Mr. Jolly? The theory that murderers are very seldom found among one's friends. Merci, monsieur. Good thing. Not at all. Prendete qui il signor Grant e la signora Max. On a tout vu, le bureau dans la cuisine maintenant. Évidemment, vous en fichez, vous. Vous n'allez pas le déjeuner. Pas de pousser tout ça. Mais monsieur, vous de Trieste. Quite, quite. I intended to alight at Trieste, monsieur. But now it may be necessary for me to go on to Zagreb. It's a long journey, isn't it? And that's why I would like to have a single compartment. I wonder whether you could help me. Hmm? Monsieur, all are occupied. Oh. Ah, non, non, non. One will be vacant from Trieste. Oh, but that, alas, is promised. Tiens, non, 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 non. It isn't anymore. It was for Monsieur Poole, he who has died. Oh, well, could I have that one, then? If Monsieur so desires. Which number is it? Number three. Three. Well, if I shouldn't require it, I'll let you know. Thank you very much. Merci, Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Vous permettez... Eh bien, dites-donc, je n'ai pas vous. Chez moi.
Mr. Grant. You say that Mr. Poole and you met yesterday for the first time. That's right. You're sure of that? Yes, positive. Then why did you tell Bishop that Mr. Poole and you were traveling together on your legal business? I didn't tell him that. Poole told him that. But you were there at the time, it seems. Yes, certainly. Then why didn't you contradict him? Well... Why not? Well, it's a, it's, it's a longish story. And an old one, too. Well, you see, I was with Joan, uh, Miss Maxted, and Bishop came along. Well, Poole played up well and said he was in with me. I suppose he wanted sanctuary. But if you were with this young lady, why not tell your friend the truth? The truth? Well, uh, you see, uh, I'm a married man. Now, tell me, can Englishmen not even sin with honesty? Now, listen, Joliffe. You're French. I'm English, see? I have noticed that, Mr. Grant. Well, it said that with an Englishman, his reputation comes before, um, well, uh, his romance. An Englishman will go to any lengths to keep his reputation clean. To any lengths, Mr. Grant? Yes. Uh, dash it all, not to those lengths, though. H hang it all, you aren't still on that tack, are you? And now, listen, Joliffe. I can't tell you who killed Poole, but I can prove it wasn't me. Please proceed. Well, the doctor said the Pooh was murdered around 12.30. Agreed. Right. Secondly, the doctor also said that he thought I was unconscious for about an hour. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, the doctor said that death was instantaneous. Mm -hmm. And lastly and fourthly, when Miss Maxis and the steward found me, I was just regaining consciousness. Oh, I think so. Now, look here. A fellow can't act a bump like that. Ooh. Agreed. Right. What's left? Three possibilities. Here's number one. I murdered Poole after he knocked me out. Number two... Poole knocked me out after I murdered him. Number three, another fellow murdered him. But there is another possibility. Suppose that Miss Maxted is in your compartment awaiting your return from playing cards. Oh. A moment, please. Poole comes in with you, indeed insists on coming in. You don't want him there to his company, they say. So you try to throw him out. He draws a knife, you knock it from his hand, he sees the bottle, picks it up and knocks you out. This leaves Miss Maxted alone with him. Consumed with fear, she sees the knife, picks it up. He tries to take it away from her. There is a struggle, and in the struggle, she shuts her eyes and stabs. No, it isn't true. Ridiculous. I'm not finished yet. Miss Maxted then tries to bring you around. She takes an hour to do so. Then you ask her to abandon you. She leaves, but her needle she catches in the door, and the steward finds her there, a trap. That fits the facts. Ridiculous. The motive isn't there. The motive, I don't agree. What about her fear? What about her panic? Women are emotional. Not English, will you? I take your word for that. Well, if you don't want my motive, what about yours? Mr. Poole knew your secret, didn't he, poor Mr. Poole? And by blackmailing you, he holds you in his power. Your reputation gone, your business wound up, your income disappeared. And you yourself announced that Englishmen would go to any lengths. I can disprove that theory. Why? When Mr. Poole was killed, I was in bed in my compartment, and I didn't leave it until half past one. You asked the girl I shared it with. She was awake. She saw me go. Porta qui la signora Valia Slavenka. You can smoke if you like. Ah, good morning, Miss Slavenka. I trust I haven't dragged you from some symphony concert. I have no radio, monsieur. It's a pity. Mine is at your disposal, mademoiselle. That's very kind of you. Now, tell us, at what time this young lady left her compartment last night? We were talking, weren't we? Yes. At what time, please? It would be just after half past twelve. Oh, no, it wasn't. Please, please think again. It was just after half past twelve. You're sure of that? I had occasion to look at my watch. What do you mean, occasion? I had amused myself by wondering how long her friend would keep her waiting. Women are like that, you know. Yes, yes, I know. Is that all? Uh, yes. I may go? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh, but... Well, Miss Maxted, according to Miss Slavenka, you were not in your compartment when Poole was killed. Oh, but... But I was. I promise you I was. Oh, that woman's making a mistake. Perhaps her watch had stopped her. Joan! Did you see anyone in the corridor on your way to my compartment last night? Now think. Yes. Yes, I did. I passed a man. He looked a foreigner. Good-looking, rather tall. Oh, had, George, you must have seen him. Had he got fair hair? Yes. Now, he was the fellow who was playing poker with us. There were no other passengers around. Well, what's his name? Zerter, I believe. Yes, that's right. Captain Zerter. Please send for him at once. 
At your service. Il signor Zorta, per piacere. This is an outrage. Shut up. Monsieur, in this compartment there was something left for me which is no longer here. I assume, therefore, that it has been found by you or by you. I shall count five. If it is not in my possession, by the time I finish counting five, you will be shot. One, two, three. Sir, just in the nick of time. This man attacking you, monsieur? Yes, I charge him with assault and battery him with attempted murder. Insolent, cowardly thief. Will the signore come along to see the inspector? Yes, certainly. Avanti! Mills, clean up this mess. Yes, sir. Just as I detect him, this officer turned up. Do you deny it? Yes, he never touched me. Do you deny that you attacked Mr. McBain? No, what's the use? What were you looking for? Mr. McBain, do you know what Mr. Zerta was looking for? It's fairly common knowledge that I'm not exactly a pauper, isn't it? I shan't keep you any longer. Thank you, Mr. McBain. Thank you. This is the man who met me in the corridor last night. The evidence of a trained robber is always a bit suspect. Why should it be? It doesn't mean a thing to him. At what time did you encounter this young lady in the corridor last night? Please remember, please. Yes, it's important. I'm afraid I can't remember. Well, then, near enough will do. At what time? I don't remember having met this charming young lady at all last night, Sigrid. No, thank you. I smoke a pipe. You know, this book of yours is hot air. It's quite unreadable. Mills, didn't I tell you to clean up this mess? You did indeed. Have you been drinking? Yes. Mills, are you mad? No, I'm sane. Sane at last. Look here, McBain. I found out what that train thief said he was looking for. He said one of us had found it, and he was right. You had. And you were going to keep on to it, too. What are you raving about, Mills? This diary. This will start a war. This is the secret document they pinched in Paris in that embassy. It's dynamite. And you were hiding it. Perhaps you think I was going to ask for a reward. Not you, you cunning, double-crossing old fox. Oh, I can see it all. Because they banned your silly little lecture tour, and quite rightly, you meant to use this diary as a revenge. You mean old hypocrite. Well, now, McBain, you can't, because I've got it, see? This is... There's quite a heavy penalty for keeping stolen property, McBain. Oh, so you think I'm in league with criminals, my bright young man? I'm not your bright young man. I'm your unhappy, underpaid, slightly inebriated secretary. The man who loathes your guts, McBain. The man who's going to take this diary to the police. Unless... Unless? Are you in any doubt as to your duty, Mills? Well, I'm not a saint, McBain. Like every man, I have my price, sir. If you sit down and write a check for, say, uh, 10,000 pounds? That's blackmail, Mills. Oh, no, it's not. It's back arrears of salary. 
You've kicked me around enough, and now you've got to pay for it. Yeah, 10,000 pounds isn't good enough, but, well, I'm a modest little common man, and it'll do. And uh, suppose I give you that check. What then? Well, then I'll give you the diary, and you can kick up all the dirt you want. My dear young man, I've listened to you talk because I like to know the inner character of those in my employ. I'm bound to say I'm not impressed with yours. Not only are you crooked, but you have another quality, a far less attractive quality, stupidity. <laughs> well, you don't imagine, do you, that that diary's genuine? Well, of course it is. It's not, you know. It's forged. How do you know? Because I've made a study of calligraphy. Good. I don't know why it was forged, but I do know that it is. You don't believe me, Mills. Well, then, compare it with this letter from His Excellency, the Ambassador. Well, that's typed. Right. Yes, but the signature isn't. Now, you compare that signature with what you've got in your hand. You see, it's quite clearly a fake. Look, man, look at the L's and the T's and the upward angle of the N's. And best of all, the serifs. Please observe the serifs, Mills. The what? The serifs, man, the serifs. Surely you know what serifs are. Mm. Look here, I'll show you. Thank you, Mills. That saved a lot of awkwardness. I shall present this to the chef de train. A diary found in my compartment and returned. Do you know that this little book was stolen from a certain embassy in Paris? Really? Interesting. The Sûreté was instantly informed. But now, fortunately, we have it back again quickly. By the way, where did you get it? I found it in my berth, didn't I, Mills? Yes. Uh, my secretary was with me at the time. It had been hidden there. Undoubtedly by Monsieur Poole. It all begins to fit. Poole wished to be alone in this compartment, to hide this so that he could have it pass through the customs. When I arrived, he wanted to change compartments. Monsieur, there's something else. Let's have it. This fellow asked for that compartment just an hour ago. He said he wanted it. No doubt. And when he held me up, he said there was something hidden there. That's why I looked. Thank you. The story is unwound. Poole was a man not unknown to the police. Hid this book. He won't tell you where. You threaten him, you fight, he dies. As you will. I'm sorry to disappoint you, monsieur, but I was nowhere near the place where Mr. Poole was killed last night. Indeed. Where were you last night? <laughs> well, this is most embarrassing. Still, this seems to be my life against the lady's reputation. The one can be repaired, the other can't. All right. After I'd finished playing cards last night, I went to the compartment of the lady who was sharing it with this charming lady there and remained there until... Uh, after three. Do you understand? Indeed. Indeed, monsieur. Thank you. Assez d'or à Slavenka, bien piacere. If you have no further need of myself and my secretary, then... Uh... No, indeed, monsieur. I am most grateful to you for what you've done. Thank you. and all. Her friend's in my compartment, that foreign chap. Really? Got sort of foreign habits, too. What do you mean? Nigh on two o'clock last night when he came to bed. Hair all ruffled and... <laughs> I mean to say. Yes, I know, boy. But don't tell me. It's my blood pressure, you know. <laughs> As I told you, I had occasion to look at my watch. Captain Zerta's visit was the occasion. I looked at the time when he arrived and when he left at three o'clock. I hope I 
have you talked to him, monsieur? What was that you said? I didn't say anything bad about him. No, no. About the time he came to bed. Oh, around two o'clock. And we knocked off at 12.30. Come on, Leeds United. We're going to save an Englishman from the ruddy guillotine. It was as clear as mud to me. I'm not satisfied. From you, one story, and from you, another one. They can't both be true. A pair is lying, and I have an instinct which it is. We know a bit about you, Zerta. But you can't prove it, can you? Try proving it. Monsieur, be true to this, will you? Come on, Randall. No, no, it isn't fair to give the lad away. Why not? I've had my fun, you know. Yes, I know. Now, look, this fellow Randall shares a compartment with Zerta, and he said he barged in last night at two o'clock. Is it correct? Hey, that's right, lad. Not that I'm blaming him. I've been a bit of a lad myself, you know. Last war, of course. Have you anything to say, Zerta? Of course I have. A lot. You smug, self-satisfied policeman. Can't you see the truth? It wasn't me. It was a man who gave you the diary. How else do you think he could have got it, huh? <laughs> Cigarette? Catch. Stand still, the lot of you. Drop your rifles. Don't you reach for your gun, unless you want to die. Now, Mr. Jolliffe, will you please hand over the diary? I thought you were going to forget it. Thank you. Why? And I hope we'll catch you a murderer. I pay you for. Follow me, Mills. What up? What up? Easy. Hey, lad. Better, well, Monsieur. What up? I will get you, Porter. Ah, I can't even. Thanks very much. Oh, no, I'm very well known here. Uh, Portieri. Portieri. Hey, Portieri. She gone, George? Uh, yes, uh, back to Paris. Well, I suppose there wasn't much else you could do. I say, Tom, you you won't say anything, will you? Good heavens, no. Of course not. Uh, thanks. I, I rather thought you disapproved. So I did. Sheer jealousy. Well, goodbye, Tom. Uh, George, I'll come on to the hotel tonight uh, and cheer you up. No, Tom. Yes, well, we could play cards. No, Tom. Tonight, seven o'clock in the bar. See you then. Uh... Goodbye. No, I, I do wish you diamond at my hotel this evening. I want you to meet Miss Biggle. She's organizing secretary here. She promised she'd meet me, but unfortunately, she hasn't turned up. Well, uh, thanks, thanks, just the same. Uh, fact is, I've got plenty on hand, you know, duty and all that kind of thing. Well, uh, so long. Oh, what a pity. She's so intelligent. I'm sure you'd have liked her very much. Yeah, I'm sure I would. I can't think why she isn't here. She promised she'd meet me. Well, uh, uh, so long, Elvin, old boy. Uh, nice to have met you. Uh, keep your chin up, eh? Yes, rather. <laughs> yes. Sure, yeah, quiet. Ah, oh, Miss Biggle. Hello, Michael. Darling, how wonderful to see you after all this time. Hey, Elvin! I just changed my plans! Hey, Elvin! Arrivederci, Inspettore. Arrivederci and mille grazie. Well, what's the verdict? The Italian police are satisfied. The murdered man, the murderer, accounted for. And I'm free? Unless the surety charges you as an accessory. Then I'm still a prisoner. Yes. We must both go back to Paris by the next train. In the meantime, would you care to join me uh, in a glass of wine? <laughs> 